Hi learners, welcome to Internet of Things Design and Applications. Today is the first lecture on Introduction to Internet of Things. I am Dr. Pradeep Kumar from VIT Chennai and here is my email address. So what do you mean by Internet of Things? So in this topic we will be seeing the following sections. What is an IoT? What an IoT demands? What do you mean by open standard for IoT? What are the different applications in various sectors and domains? and how a iot device looks like and what are the limitations so being in introduction session we are limiting ourselves to only the pure introduction of iot so what is an iot so internet of things is just uh, any any non living objects or any objects that we use day to day life that have a provision for internet so that's what we call it as uh, connected objects so in this case here we can say radio frequency identification or fids we have sensors we have actuators we have instruments and we have smart appliances so the, all these things categorizes internet of things so now recently we can see that the poll uh, during the toll booth collection so the collection is collected using uh, rfid tags so in india pan india it was mandated that every toll uh, booth should collect their money directly from rfids so that's how this internet of things works So IoT mainly works with IPv6. So we'll come to this shortly. What is meant by IPv6 and what is meant by IPv4? We'll come to this. So it is powered mainly by sensor nodes, or shortly we call it as MOTs. So MOTES, which are low cost, small size, and power efficient. So most of these are miniaturized devices that are uh, uh, highly efficient in power and small, low cost, and small size. Every node have an address. So this is very important here. so there can be accessed from anywhere so it will have an address so this address and this ip address and 6 have a relation so every node will have an address that have an ip address and 6 address real time guaranteedness so it will it will the further processing will not be delayed so it's completely uh, real time guaranteedness is there so what an iot demands so iot demands as we see it is low power low cost low memory footprint so the ram and rom will be very limited in size so that uh, uh, you need not uh, have huge amount of ram or huge amount of read only memory so should have provision for ipv6 with six slow pan adaptation layer so we'll come back to this also in detail what is a six slow pan so six slow pan adaptation layer so that means that six slow means six for ipv6 lo for low power and wireless personal area networks so that's what we call as six slow pan we have a new layer added to it we call it as adaptation layer separate routing protocol for low power and low z networks so we also call this as low z networks so low z or low z networks so because mostly iot networks they are all belonging to the low z networks the packet loss will be very high because it is unlike the uh, wired network or wireless network so packet loss will be very huge in uh, this inter- internet of thing applications new lightweight application layer protocol unlike http but should have the support for http also so http have huge amount of headers so that is very disadvantages for iot so we have alternative for this we call it as coap consent application protocol header compression for ipv6 against iwe802.15.4 back so mainly the hardware most of this uh, 90% of the devices they support the hardware on this iwe802.15.4 medium access control so this is how the hardware is being supported so this what the iot demands so now we'll go through some of the applications where iot is uh, nearly suitable so we can see almost all the applications that are really suitable for iot so the first example being iot for cities so we call it as smart cities now so in smart cities what are the places where we have a city so how iot play a major or vital role there so one good example here is smart parking we have smart roads we have smart lighting we have structural health monitoring of the buildings then surveillance we do and emergency services like fire gas leak and water leakage protection systems so these things comes under this uh, uh, smart city applications this iot the first thing it satisfies uh, the second thing is weather monitoring so it is on the environment so in the environment how it ha- handles so one thing is weather monitoring so we monitor weather air pollution monitoring so as we have seen india crosses the pm 2.5 so that's how the air quality have been increased over a period of time so in the last uh, last year it was crossing more than 100 most of the days in most of the cities in india like in chennai in delhi it was very high that 
it is too dangerous to even inhale the air so that's how this air pollution monitoring happens here and noise pollution monitoring so noise pollution monitoring again in the sense that the sound exerted by the vehicles will be have will uh, caters and the industries that uh, produces noise will have huge impact on the environment and river flood detection this another one and forest fire detection so forest fire detection usually happens with the help of methane so we just check for the presence of methane gas using this iot so these are the some of the applications that we handle for environment so next is we have energy systems so energy systems means we have smart grid how the energy is uh, uh, distributed power is distributed and prognostic health management so health management of management of all these devices also uh, play a major role and renewable energy integration so for example wind energy solar energy how do we integrate so these things these things also caters here the iot play a major role in the energy systems next example is on a fleet that's our logistics how in the fleet tracking this logistic in the logistics how iot handles in the logistics so one good example is remote vehicle diagnosis suppose the vehicle is traveling let's say for example of 5000 kilometers so during this day, entire duration of time how the remote vehicle diagnosis happens how remotely somebody can able to monitor this and fleet tracking where this fleet is currently uh, traveling and like that and ship and monitoring so how the ship and is being monitored uh, whether it is intact uh, and each and every section when it crosses the boundary so the ship and will be monitored by a iot devices so next thing is for the industry so it is for manufacturing or any kind of industry so that Uh, how we can do is so mainly thing is smart lighting so most of the industries nowadays they have smart lighting as long as there are persons in a particular uh, factory or a shop floor there will be uh, smart lighting will be there and machine diagnosis so we have machine diagnosis here so automatically uh, the sound uh, vibrations etc by the machines will be keep on checking periodically and accordingly it will be reported indoor air quality monitoring so that means that so inside the plant there was indoor air quality monitoring so it is presence of leakage of gas and other stuff then emergency services like fire gas leakage and water leakage detection then health management prognostic health management and m to m communication the machine machine to machine communication this also will be coming shortly on how what is this m to m communication machine to machine communication we'll see shortly so now really some questions that we might ask so before we learn iot we might ask some questions saying that what are the different tech stuff that we really need it so first thing is how to address the devices whether i need ip version 4 or whether i need ip version 6 so that is again a challenge so let me prefer this how data is transmitted on what means the data can be transmitted so as long as if i have a wifi i can use wifi but if i do not have a wifi then i can think of going for 5g lte and sometime i can go for this wpan and zigbee so all these methods i can able to prefer when the data how i can able to transmit what is the speed of the data so what speed i can able to so 10 gigabits per second is practically uh, not possible in iot so obviously i can end up in uh, these two speeds 40 kbps and 120 kbps but slightly more than 120 kbps also it's possible nowadays because of the uh, speed limitation in iot devices who controls the medium so the medium access control and the data link so these two layers controls the medium how to handle it across geography so that means that across the world how i can able to handle it so there are uh, so many applications there so two applications are consigned application protocol and uh, message queue so we tt means telemetry telemetry and for all these things final thing is the networking is a key aspect so we need to know the networking basic stuff for handling this uh, internet of things so for that networking is a basic key of it so what is the osi layer of networking versus iot layer so that we have given the basic networking versus iot so this side is completely on iot and this side is on networking okay so this is a physical layer so we have we call it as phy and we call it of mac we call uh, network layer so this is a network layer but here we call it as adaptation layer adaptation and here we have network layer then transport layer then finally application layer but here we have application layer transport layer and uh, network layer network and uh, this layer so this is how the way it works so we can see 802.3 is ethernet 802.11 is wifi 
whereas in iot here we have 802.15.4 which is nothing but a kind of zigbee standard so the data link layer also we have 802.11 and 802.3 but where whereas here we have 802.15.4 so in the network layer we have ipv4 and ipv6 whereas here we call it as 6 low pan that is on the adaptation layer so this adaptation layer here we have border gateway protocol shortest path first protocol object link and state routing protocol so these things it categorizes in the network layer whereas here we have ipv6 and uh, routing protocol for lossy networks these two then transport layer we have udp and icmp internal control message protocol and user data cram protocol here we have tcp udp icmp and http and ftp here here we have coa and utility so that's a major differences here but the um, uh, minor differences here is both of them follow the same open standard in uh, inter uh, connection of networking layer but uh, this iot have a specialized so everything is miniaturized everything have low uh, low cost everything will be small size so that's how the challenge here is so now the characteristics uh, of uh, this iot is a small packet size as you already seen 40 k or less 120 kbps that is a small packet size low bandwidth again we have uh, category we can categorize up to 250 kbps for the zigbee protocol so in the zigbee we can categorize up to 250 kbps the topologies we can have star and mesh topology so star topology means so we can have something like this it's a corner point here so we can establish network mesh topology means we can use like this so there's a mesh topology low power battery operated so it's low power bad mostly battery operated so you can see the two double a size battery most of the devices they can handle with the two double a size battery as we have seen that the battery looks like this so it is a aa battery so how the batteries that we were using in uh, uh, remote control so remote batteries low cost so mostly it is uh, low cost ad hoc network and device has limited accessibility so mostly it is ad hoc means the network will be created on demand and device has limited accessibility unreliable because of the wireless medium so mainly this is unreliable because of wireless anything might be happening so that's what we call it as unreliable so how a device looks like so this is the first generation of devices iot devices so most of them are uh, so you can see that each board has uh, this is a node that connect to the uh, usb so this is we call it as gateway gateway node or we call it as base station both base station whereas this will be called as sensor node or simply we call it as mot we call the MOT is called as MOT. So it has two product, it has two different boards. So one board with a black color thing is an antenna. The other is the sensor board. Sensor board. So it has two things, antenna and the sensor board. So this is the first generation means uh, in 2000 before 2010. So in the year to the before less than 2010, uh, these were the devices where that were been supporting. And this is hardly as a size is hardly the half of the credit card, the size of less than half of the credit card size. So now this is the recent kind of boards. Here we call it as a Zowl sensor modes. So this is recently have a good memory and a good processing power, everything is good. And even LEDs, they are all LED with the colored LED. So only one LED will be there. So the LED will be based on RGB. So if you vary the color, the LED can be grown according to the color variation here. So that's what we call it as Zolartia modes. Simply we call it as Zolartia or called as Zowl modes. So when a device is suitable for IoT, uh, so adaptation layer, we have this adaptation layer, 6 low pan. Not all devices support this and also IPv6. So most of the sensor, first generation of the sensor nodes may not be supporting this IPv6 and 6 low pan, but recent generation they have a full support. No method exists to make IP run over 802.15.4 networks because IPv6 the maximum transfer unit is 1280 bytes whereas for this the maximum transfer byte is 128 bytes. So this is a, this is a complete hardware whereas this is the uh, networking layer. So how can we send uh, for example this is 1280 and this is 128. So this is 128 and this is 1280. So how can I send this 1280 into this 128 which is a very tedious process so this is what iot is all about because ipv6 is very huge and whereas the the 
8.02.15.4 is very small. So for that what we do is, so we have 1280 here, IPv6 and we have an uh, adaptation layer and we have a small pipe. So this will be 128 bytes that is uh, 802.15.4. This is 4 and this is we call it as 6 low pan. So 6 low W pan and this we call it as IPv6. So the packets will be sent here. It have a compression and decompression everything happens here then finally it sends the data here and it reaches the data here. So this is how the way this uh, things works. Uh, so mostly IoT handles the addressing only in this manner. So that's why the 6 loop is a very powerful mechanism that an IoT has. We call it as an adaptation layer. It adapts to the environment of the IPv6 from the top layer. Not all ad hoc routing protocols may be immediately suitable for 6 low pan. So all the ad hoc routing protocols may not be suitable for 6 low pan. So because the ad hoc routing protocols are very uh, power uh, hungry devices that means they need more energy, they need more power, more memory, everything is more. So but 6 low pan the other way around they, it needs only, it operates on a very limited voltage and limited energy. In that case it may not be suitable. Security for multi hub needs to be reconsidered. So multi hub network security is again a major issue. Even in IoT, uh, the major disadvantage nowadays is the security issue. Okay. So next thing is 802.15.4. So here this is a small packet size. Totally as I said in the previous slide, it is 128 bytes including the medium access control. Uh, 103 bytes is the payload. Payload means it can carry able to, it can carry only 103 bytes in a given second. Uses 64 bit MAC addresses but has provision for 16 bit short addresses. So it handles the bigger addresses as well as the smaller addresses. Support for multiple topologies and data rate anywhere between 20 kbps to 250 kbps. The range is from 20 to 250, so which is very reasonable one. And the range of operations between 10 meter to 30 meters. So 30 meters is a very huge uh, length, which is enough to handle the any IoT device across the globe. So IPv6, why we need go for IPv6? The major challenge here is it's more suitable for higher density. Uh, stateless 10 is mandated no network address translation is necessary possibility of adding innovative techniques such as location of our addressing so we can able to find the location also so from which location this address is coming or the data is located according to the naming we can able to find out the location of our addressing so all these things are the advantages here the disadvantages are larger address width so as i said that it is the maximum transfer unit is 1280 bytes so which is very uh, larger so which have to be handled accordingly Complying to IPv6 node requirements, we have IP securities mandated. So that means, so by default we have to enable this IP security which takes additional extra load processing in handling the packets. So that's why this again I may issue in uh, this IPv6. So what are the limitations of IoT? So in the limitations here we have cost of deployment. So we need to shell out more um, uh, money to deploy this IoT. So even for a small paddy field or agriculture field, we need at least 10, 10 modes, uh, 10 modes. So each mode costing around, let's say for example, $100. So 10 modes will be costing around uh, $1,000, which is a very huge costly thing. Time to market. So the deployment cannot be instantiately done. It, it will take some time to market it. Complexity in deploying. So that means uh, there are additional complexity in deploying. So it is not a simple network that we can easily tune into. Yeah, slightly complex in the Hazards due to negligence of human efforts. So again, this is a major issue. Uh, even if a small uh, sensor is been dead or lying or uh, if anything had a thing happens to a particular mode, again, uh, it can be a hazard at some time. Scalability in issue. So for example, if you want to increase from 10 modes to 25 modes, again, there will be a slight issue there. So that's why the scalability also have will be one of the limitations. So I think uh, the introduction part is done. So in this introduction what we have seen is uh, what are the different uh, IoT applications it have, what are the different limitations, so what a device looks like and why we need an IoT and what are the uh, IoT, uh, what an IoT demands. So these are the things that we have done and these are the references that I have taken uh, this slide from and finally thanks for listening. So I will meet you in the, the next lecture on uh, more detail of this, whatever we have seen more detail about this. So thank you very much.